I first sat on Frankel in the summer of 2010. There's a saying in our industry, you can't beat breeding. And to look at him, you couldn't find a blemish. Looking back, we had so many good horses, but at that stage, he was just another one. But one morning on the lime kilns, just after he'd won his second race, he was being led by two older horses. We went about a furlong and a half, went over the road, and I remember shouting for the guys in front to go on, go faster, because I was out of control. I got another furlong further along, and I, ha I had to pull out and, and let him go. Each time you get run away with, you get to the stage where the horse has burnt themselves out, and you hit the brick wall. However, on this morning where the brick wall should or would have been, he went on through it, but he quickly filled his lungs and went again. And I thought to myself, this is something I've never experienced before. The final day at Ascot on Frank was right up there with my most enjoyable days in the saddle. You had sort of the magical story of Henry and how this was going to be the crowning part of his renaissance. You know, the public loved him. You know, he had this charisma about him and, and people latched on to that. But you could tell that everybody was there for just one horse. Take corner one, Franco! Take four, Franco! You can have whatever bet you like here. There was a lot of people who kind of come to see what they thought they never would. Frankel is exceptional. He's the best mile to mile a quarter horse I've ever seen in my life. I wouldn't have missed it for the world, you know. Really, very, very exciting. Champions Day was a test of his aptitude like no other. With the ground having gone as testing as it was, sort of Mother Nature had tried to ambush him. In my mind, there was never any doubt of his participation that day. He's going to run. I'm excited. This is what we come into racing for. As big a deal it was, as a jockey, I didn't get overwhelmed by all the hype. The reason I'm so G'd up about today and everybody else here is because of what he does to your heart. You don't think about the crowds, the pressure, the, you don't think about the glory, you don't think about the money, you don't think. For me, I'm happiest on the back of a horse. He was a very intelligent racehorse. There was nothing normal about the level of competence he had on a race course. He was trained by a genius, a man who trained and lived by his horses on feel. So I was always confident he had what it took to get through. Fingers crossed. <laughs> You get in a bubble with your animal and you, be, you become one. You know, it's the preliminaries of a race can be more important than the race itself. We had a kind of a routine where we'd always kind of go down near enough the last to get the post and 
would make sure I'd trot him off and walk him and make sure that he was nice and relaxed. You've got a coiled spring full of all the superlatives you can fire into a racehorse and you've got to keep that under wraps until the gates open. They're off and racing. Frank will slow away as dwelt and just required pushing into the bridle for the early stages. It was a slight concern when he broke remarkably slowly. Concern, but never a worry. Having slept in the stalls, how close does he move? At that stage of his career, I think the horse himself would have been as astonished if anyone else gave him something to think about. A little bit of early drama with uh, Frankel in fifth place, sleeping coming out of the stalls. It was a case of testing conditions to go as far as I could on the bridle. By doing that, you had as much up your sleeve as you could to just get him home. Frankel is in fourth with the pink cap and trying to move forward now into a challenging position. He was so accustomed to his own superiority, I think losing was never in question. Frankel pulls towards the outside, the pink cap, Tom Quealy beginning to try and close down. It was just a case of sheer equine brilliance outperforming the competition. Frankel moves alongside, Quealy's finger poised on the button for one final electric pass. Frankel bidding to settle it. and lived up to the title. Salute a racing great. There were special moments after the race because the people that had come to Ascot that day had come to see a fantastic performance and Frankel didn't disappoint. First number three, Frankel. There was a whole load of mixed feelings. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be a parade of honour that may last a little while. I sort of cherished those last three or four minutes on his back because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do it again. 14 unbeaten career starts. I knew that I had to make the most of all of that. Created a, a legacy and a, a story, and that was the final page in the final chapter. Tom Queeley in the saddle in the colours of Khalid Abdullah. For Judmont, you know, Prince Khalid's lifelong ambition and passion to create the ultimate in equine perfection, and we did it. It was a huge moment in racing. Ladies and gentlemen, Frankel, the champion on Champions Day. He had a will to win, and he was a horse full to the brim with ability. Masterfully handled by Sir Henry Cecil. A sad day, because the end of it relationship. That horse added longevity to Henry's life. I've no doubt of that. He's a legend, yeah. He is. But um, I've enjoyed every minute. Frankel gave a very sick man something to live for. He's the best I've ever seen. And I'd be very surprised in the history of racing if there ever been one better. I very much doubt there will be another better, greater. I have a hunch though, if there was to be one better, I think the sire would be Frankel.